Hi guys, and uh, welcome to my uh, ride day 40, um, which is nearly the half, nearly half of my ride days. And this one is from Cali to uh, to Pasto in uh, Colombia, and probably the first time I felt like I was getting into the real wilderness um, on this trip. Um, Central America, whilst it's pretty rough and tumble, um, there's always cities sort of close by, you know. But here, it was, uh, I mean, the town of Pasto is very remote type town and, and you can see that the services and things like that aren't, aren't anywhere near as good as they are in Medellin, Cali or Bogota, even Cartagena. Like nearly all the roads entering the town were, were dirt roads uh, and stuff like that. So. I really felt like I was right in the trip and really getting into it, um, meeting some really good people along the way. Um, again, just taking my time. Um, I had uh, I had about um, about 400 kilometres to do, and I did it in about eight hours. Uh, I had um, quite a few towns, to, uh, major sort of towns to go through, um, so about 240 miles. Um, yeah, but it's uh, started off basically before first light, as you can see, and um, and and just made my way. So I, I was I was aiming to get there around two to three p.m. to Pasto because I was only going to stay one night. And whenever I'm only staying one night, I like to get off early so that I can get and, and have a look around the town as much as possible. It is pretty slow going, but it's so much better riding when you're riding through towns like this all along the way you know it, it make, makes it a lot slower but a lot more interesting and you can then just stop off and have a break somewhere you always see somewhere you can sit down or lay down i prefer to lay down on any of my stops because i'm sitting down on the bike so i prefer to get a bench somewhere uh, there's not obviously not the same sort of facilities sometimes bus stops are, are in with amazing views and you can lay down on the bench on the bus stop a lot of traffic though a lot of trucks and um and, and mini buses and, and that sort of thing. In and around the towns, there's always lots of traffic, a lot of mopeds and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so uh, today I want to talk about. Uh, also, I'm going to from now on, I'm going to start talking in each in each of the trips. Talk about the things that I take with me and, and why. And I'm going to do separate videos on those later on. But uh, today I wanted to um, to basically uh, talk about. Um, uh, my clothing, uh, the, the clothing that I that I choose to, on my trip, um, and the reasons why I I, cho I chose I choose that, that clothing. So as far as my riding gear, um, for my gloves I, I've got the Klim, Climb Dakar gloves for the warm weather that I wear most days. They're minimum protection, but when I'm riding on on roads I, I prefer to wear those. I know it's not the smartest uh, smartest thing. And then for the uh, for the cold weather, uh, I've got the Held H E L D Air and Dry gloves. Really good gloves, bomb-proof gloves. Um, pretty tough uh, sort of gloves. Um, so that's for the cold weather, and they they perform quite well. It's a beautiful little town I went through just then. Um, for my pants, I, I I've got both the Climb uh, Overland and the Climb Badlands. The Badlands are like really big, heavy. Uh, heavy gear and I chose not to bring the Badlands with me and just go with the Overland. Still good protection, not as bomb proof, uh, but uh, a little bit more flexibility for walking around and uh, and not nowhere near as heavy. Um, but they're really good. You've got uh, on the fronts, you've got little air pockets you can to let the air in and on, same on the back and on the back of the pants, on the seat of the pants as well and on the front of the pants two zippers to open up to let some air through. They are waterproof out of the box. So um, you basically, if you've done up to your neck and you've zipped it up, uh, you're not going to get wet underneath. Um, obviously, you've got to wear a neck scarf of some sort, sort of water water resistant, uh, water repellent type spray on top of it, which I had. Um, for my thermals, my base layers, I um, I had the REI uh, basics, which is you know which are pretty well recognised, but they're not good for cold weather. Um, and they just let air through for some reason. 
um, but the, the best ones were the Halle Hansen um, dry stripes. So they were they had nice wicker uh, fabric, uh, so the sweat wasn't too bad in them, and they also had um, they were also really warm. Uh, in the real extremes, cold. Once I got down really down south, um, going up into the mountains, and when I got some rain, I still was a little bit cold, but they still held tight. So they were really good. Um, I wouldn't recommend the REI brand of anything. I've tried a few of theirs, and they just uh, for some reason they're just not nowhere near as comfortable. Um, so basically, um, for the boots, I, I have the Daytona Roadstar GTX boots. They're quite expensive, um, about four to five hundred. You'll get you'll get them for, um, but the the beauty of them are they're freaking uncomfortable when you first get them. But after a couple of weeks of wearing them, God, they were comfortable. They were so nice to wear. Uh, they're waterproof as well. I never got wet feet the whole trip. Never got any wet feet. Uh, but as a backup, when it got really, really wet and muddy, I put because just didn't want to get them, you know, having to clean all that shit off me. I, I have got the Nelson Rig waterproof boot covers. Pretty simple type things. Um, for the socks, I I just, I just had like three pairs of climb socks, long blacks, um, and. Uh, Obviously, my helmet is the Shuba Z1 Hunter. I went through two of them. I, I replaced the one after my uh, accident um, because I did hit my head pretty hard. And they're about $1,000 each, so about $900 each. So they're bloody expensive, but they're, they're really good. And um, once with the lid down, you know, there's not a lot of noise in them at all, you know. And that's what Shuba really pride themselves on. I've got the, the C3 Pro as well. And you know, with the with the visor down and that, amazing. Um, for my everyday wear, and this is really important, you're going to think, and obviously it depends whether you're a girl or a guy here, but you're going to think, oh, well, I'll have this for this, but keep everything to a minimum. I mean, I my when I first set out, I had like about four or five pairs of shorts. I only wore two or three pairs, so I had uh, for my everyday wear, I had a couple of pairs of surf shorts. Make sure they're really comfortable and they're not like seams aren't in bad places. Because I used to wear my board shorts under under my climb gear, uh, and basically on some stops, um, especially when I was oceanside, I just get my gear off and go for a swim in the ocean. Beautiful, you know. Um, but make sure they're really comfortable. Uh, I, I just had some light t-shirts, um, so I had like four or five light, really lightweight t-shirts. Because, like, until you get down to Santiago, Chile, you don't need anything warm. Um, I had two pairs of dress shorts and two pairs of dress shirts. No jeans. Um, I had a pair of pants as well, just a, uh, some cargo-type pants, just for hiking in. Uh, some REI pants, they were really good. Um, and a couple of pairs of short socks. For my uh, footwear, um, I had two flip-flops from San Basol. I had one Cartagena and one, uh, so one Columbia pair, and I also had one um, uh, Ecuador pair. Actually, I had three, I had, because uh, I sent a few back, I had um, uh, Brazil as well, uh, and a few others. Uh, so, uh, I also had a pair of Dunlop Volley casual shoes. They're really, really comfortable. They're lightweight, they fold up, and they don't take up much room. It's Dunlop Volley casual shoes, they're about $30 each. I had a pair of the rubber surf shoes, you know those shoes you wear on surfboards and, and in the surf when you're walking across rocks, really comfortable. Um, so yeah, so this is coming now into a, um, I'm going very slowly, uh, but uh, this is coming into a, a, a crossing across a large river crossing. And those signs are kilometre an hour signs by the way. So I um I was I was trying to look for the river on the left and see if there was uh, bridges, any bridges, because there was a few roads on the paper map that seemed to go across some sort of footbridge or something, and I was sort of looking for that. Uh, I didn't find it though. Um, but as you can see, you know, really beautiful riding, just taking my time, and just trucks again. Um, but yeah, so um, so for, for all your clothing, the clothing, for one, I had one bag, a 45 litre bag, and for my clothing, um, 
it would take up about one quarter of that bag. The, the reason for it is, is you need so much other stuff. Clothing is, you finish your day's ride. If you're going to do hiking, you need hiking boots. But I used my boots, um, my, uh, my uh, Daytona Roadstar boots are so comfortable. I could use them for hiking as well. They're, they're, they're a little bit on the heavy side for hiking, but still perfect for that sort of stuff, you know. Um, and so it's the hiking boots take up a lot of room, uh, like custom custom made for that sort of thing. Just take up a lot of room. So I, I, I would not uh, recommend um, having those, okay? Uh, but it's up to you. You've got the room, you've got the room. Um, the camping gear, if you were camping, you would be a lot lighter, but camping is is good fun and it's, uh, it's, it's comfortable, you know, to do. So, um, I suggest you, you do as much camping as you can if you're going to be camping. Um, and in South America, there's plenty of places. Um, for, for camping, um, the best places to do it are by rivers, obviously on the high side of a river, and just making sure you've got a nice uh, surface. Just check out the terrain and say, okay, this is a high point. Uh, no water's going to get up here. And if it does rain during the night, I'm not going to get flooded out. Uh, in in your um, in your gears uh, in your tent, um, so I usually used used to if there was a river I'd probably be about 10 15 feet above the river, um, and making sure that I look to see that the river never gets that height. Um, you can usually tell uh, if that's if that's the case. So um, now as far as finding camping spots, if you just look up any if you get paper maps, you get, you'll get all the little dirt roads and they lead to rivers and there's no one around. You know, usually no one around. Um, the other thing to do is if you find a really beautiful place on a property, just drive up and ask them and just make sure you give them like five or ten dollars US dollars. Just ask them if you can camp on their property. And th no one has ever said no to me the whole time I've ever asked over over many years. So just just do it. It's worthwhile doing it. They're friendly. A lot of the time, like, if they invite you in for dinner and they give you a dinner and stuff like that, then you give them twenty dollars, and even if they, if they don't accept it, you just leave it and go. Find it somewhere. You don't have to give hand it to them. Just find somewhere where you can put it with a little thank you note. Um, a smart move. I didn't actually have them, but a smart move is to get thank you cards. Uh, a little thank you card where you can sign on the back of it, and it has your details, uh, so they can follow you if they if they so want to. Um, and just a, a nice little thank you, thank you. And I'm going to do that on my next trip get like 50 to 100 uh, postcards, little thank you postcards with a picture of myself or the bike or whatever, um, some sort of scenery shot and a thank you and then just leave that with the money. That's all you need to do. Um, so uh, yeah, so basically this this was really good fun riding again, got really up high in the mountains again and, uh, and some fantastic views along the way, lots of big rivers, really raging rivers, look at those views, you know. Spectacular. Um, so uh, yeah, just make sure that you um, that you uh, that with your gear. And so my backpack is a Climb Crew backpack. It's fantastic backpack. Not a not a stitch went wrong on, on it the whole trip. I wore it every single day. It's got the water pack in the back, uh, three liter. It's probably too much to put three liters in there. Uh, too heavy. Uh, and and then another little secret is behind your backpack on your bike, make sure you can rest your backpack on something. So you've got a bag behind you, so you're not carrying the full weight on your backpack on your shoulders, because your shoulders will get sore. That's another thing, that car there, those freaking speakers. Um, they drive, I first witnessed them in Belize, they were everywhere in Belize, freaking pain in the backside. People blaring out religious crap and uh, or selling stuff. Um, really annoying. Um, so those people just get paid to drive around all day, blurting out whatever nonsense they're blurting out. Um, but it's really annoying. I don't know how it's illegal, how it's illegal but anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll pass through lots of little little places like this along the way. Some interesting, some not so much. Um, but this is where I, I look for you know, street food and stuff like that. Just out of the town or just coming into the town, you'll see them on uh, either side of the road. Uh, the only issue I had with with uh, Colombia was a lot of the street food was fried, you know, and it, you just, like when you're on a bike, you don't really want to have fried food, 
You want to have nice, light, really healthy food to fill your stomach up, but also give you a bit of energy and you don't feel, like if I have anything fried, I, I get a little bit tired afterwards. So, yeah, but it is slow going through all the cities, um, especially the ones that, so this, this place here has a, some market stalls on the left and right there, everyone cooking food and selling stuff and that. So it's pretty cool, but I'd already, I'd already eaten by, by this time. So yeah, and, and as I said in previous videos, really, really take your time when you're going through uh, towns because there's a lot of stuff going on, dogs, uh, you know, little kids running onto the road and stuff like that. So you just got to be super careful. Yeah, so just on the climb backpack, uh, I, I used to have any wet weather gear I wanted or any change of clothes that I wanted. Anything I really wanted to quickly access, you can quickly click, click open the, the shoulder the shoulder secure shoulder strap and then just switch uh, flip the backpack around to yourself so if you've got some chew bars or some uh, snacks or something in there easy to access i also had all my main documents in there in waterproof bags inside it I, it never got wet inside it no matter how much rain i got um, even though it's not rated as 100 uh, percent waterproof it is water resistant uh, and i also sprayed it with some uh, that some of that spray that makes it water a bit more water and, and dirt resistant. Um, but uh, yeah, a great, a great backpack. So that's basically my my riding gear, um, all my riding gear. I had a couple of neck scarves. I had a, one that I sprayed with that waterproof stuff. Um, and one of them lasted the whole distance, got a bit frayed in the end. And then I had some really light ones. And the light ones you, for the neck scarves you use for when you're doing dirt you know, dry dirt and dust and stuff like that. Just good to get it out of your mouth. So I used to have it over my mouth and uh, and going from there. But yeah, beautiful days riding. I love, just I've said it in previous videos, absolutely love this uh, uh, this riding. Um, it's just so much fun. Still didn't see many um, adventure riders along the way. Um, uh, I don't think I saw any on today. I saw, I met a, um, on, uh, towards the end of this trip, where this bridge is, uh, I met a really good, cool guy. Um, uh, he's, he's in a heavy metal band in uh, Columbia, and he's quite, quite a popular band too. Um, and uh, we chatted for about, I stopped and chatted for about half an hour. Look at those views, it's spectacular. Um, really, really pretty. Um, yeah, so I, I, uh, as I was riding up to that bridge, you know, it's going pretty slow, just take my time. And um, and the guy, uh, the guy Lewis, I think I'm coming up to it now. Yeah, had a bit of security guard, a few security guards around here as well. Um, uh, military police, sorry. Yeah, so I think I'm coming up to it. Jeez, I'm taking my time, aren't I? But whenever you see someone on the side of the road, an adventure rider or just a, a motorbike rider, you can see, see him up here on the right. Just always stop, say hello, you know, it's always good to do. And you never know if you're gonna see them again down the road. He was just riding around his country. Um, was, I think it was pretty, pretty sure he was on a Harley. Not 100% sure, but really cool guy. Um, and uh, you know we kept in touch on Facebook and all that sort of stuff. Um, taking a photo of him. Uh, yeah, but it was a really big bridge and a massive flowing river down below. And I had to stop anyway because it was uh, again you know my front tire as I've spoken about in previous videos. Uh, my front tire was losing uh, losing air. There's another one of those shots from the from the trip. That's uh, Lewis took a, a a photo of me there. Spectacular views. And the thing is, you can't stop all the time, but you wish you could stop more. Jeez, I, I just loved Colombia, especially once you got into the mountains. It was just so spectacular.
for those views. You just keep seeing these and you just think, oh, I've got to stop, oh, I've got to stop again, oh, no, I'm going to stop again, you know. But you just can't keep stopping, you've got to get, you've got to get, uh, you've got to get somewhere eventually, you know. <laughs> And I think I think the final the final part of this video is uh, is me um, filling up my uh, yeah getting the getting the uh, the the pump going again. So you can see the climb there. Yeah, there's the pump, little mini pump. There's a climb and there's some more water. I think I had some iced coffee in it today. These people on the side of the road were had all this ice and this coffee it was beautiful. And that's what I, with the climb backpack, when you put the water in it or any whatever liquid you want to put in it, uh, chuck about six or seven cubes of ice in there as well. And it, will, it was lasting me a whole day. I, th I, I think they've dis discontinued that backpack too, which is an absolute travesty because it's an absolute, I mean, I've got probably 20 backpacks and it's the best backpack I've got by such a long way. You can put camera things in there. You can put computers in there. Uh, pretty much anything you need. There's a fair bit of traffic on this road too, so I wasn't quite parked all the way off the road. But yeah, so like for your, for your clothing, so you can see on the back of my bike there, I've got the tent. It's a Lone Rider 2 tent. It's five kilos, but it, it's a two band tent, but also has a spot to park your motorbike under if you're getting into the rain. Um, didn't need it so much for this trip. I, I think there's only one one night when I was camping that the that I actually that I actually got the rain. So here I am just checking because I can check my 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 uh, tire pressure on the uh, from the from there. So once the tire pressure goes off, on, it takes a few uh, takes about thirty seconds before it kicks in. On, it shows you the tire pressure, and then you just turn the pump on. And away you go. So I've got the flip flops on the backpack. I've got my my uh, just some change of clothes, like a t-shirt, some shorts, and uh, some some of my wet weather riding gloves in the back. I've also got my um, all my passports and and stuff. I think it's coffee. Yeah, there it is. Good stuff. <laughs> and that's that's the remote control on my left wrist there for the for the for the uh, the ghost camera, the drift ghost, which is a fantastic because uh, uh, it show it flashes colours what mode you're in, and it's so handy. It's so it's for people with poor eyesight like myself. It's so much better than um, than the the GoPro remote which is just so hard to see. So here are some final shots on the way to Pasto. Really, really sort of rough old town, dirt roads into the town and um, and uh, sort of set down in a valley. Uh, just spectacular mountains everywhere. Just such a beautiful part of the country. up pretty high there and that's going into the, the town of Pasto pretty rough rough living there but great little town I'm really like the people were just flocking all around my bike when I parked it outside the hotel and I think the last shot is the, is the hotel anyway guys um, questions and comments below have a great day